this is episode 29. We've been doing these. We were doing wow. it weekly, weekly for a while. And now we are um, doing them monthly. So the first Thursday of the month. Um, if you've never met me before, my name is Taylor. And I do our communications here at my real source. Um, and Colleen and I started this mixing it up at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, oh. it, it all started with how to do a remote showing, and then it, it sort of transformed into this. So I, yep. it was a crazy times. Yep. <laughs> so a couple housekeeping things um, that we just want to let everybody know that you can find this um, recording as well as the twenty eight other recordings of mixing it up with our guests that we've had on different um, themes of each episode um on our youtube channel so there's a whole playlist on our youtube channel at youtube.com forward slash uh, my real source media and you'll see playlists and you'll see playlists for classes you'll see playlists for just some series that we've series that we've done um and then there's also the mixing it ups playlist so my hand just keeps disappearing so i think i'll stop <laughs> moving my hand um and you guys can find that there Another thing that I wanted to um, just mention real quick, let me pull it up, is we have a birthday bash event that is um, going to be on October 21st. Now, so this, excited about this. this is I know, me so too. Fun. And I like to, I just want to remind everybody about it. There's been some communications about it, um, but more will be going out. There um, is going to be this, we turned 100 um, 100 this year. And with that, we are doing a birthday, birthday bash celebration kind of, you know, themed, we did it around Halloween to make it fun. Um, it's a superhero themed escape room style, um, kind of a team building. There are limited tickets, we bought the tickets. Um, and so we want you guys to jump on. We're going to be giving away birthday presents to our members. We've been doing this for, um, non-members coming on, uh, with, um, some 100% fee fees waived on getting started. We're going to be doing some birthday presents of, you know, fees being waived hundred percent for you guys, um, for people participating. Now this, um, birthday bash is, you know, not really necessarily stuff we're going to be training or anything like that. It's just more of like a collaborative team building, get to know, um, our membership. And there's going to be a, a professional host that's going to be doing this. You'll get to be assigned a villain or a superhero, um, and little breakout sessions and stuff like that. It's all via zoom. So should be really fun. Um, you can do the convenience of your own home and, you know, just have some fun. And it's going to be at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the 21st. And I think I might dress up a little bit. I don't know about I you. I was just, I was just going to ask you, I'm like, is this where we can like don our Wonder Woman outfit or, you know, or yeah, cool. All right. I'm excited. Well, that sounds yeah. very fun. Yeah. I have, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie, but I have a costume called Hit Girl. Um, so I might, I might bust that out. Um, but I, I don't have a Wonder Woman costume, unfortunately. That's all right. I was told that Jake's going to be Batman this year. So it just seemed like the logical choice. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yep. well, I am so excited about today's show. Um, basically, you know, having the best of the best and um, having great agents giving great feedback. I'm, I'm really excited. So thank you, Taylor, for taking the lead on this and, and putting this all together. So I'm very excited about today's show. Yeah, I'm very excited to have um, the guests that we have on for the panel. This was a feedback that we had from some member surveys that they want to see a panel of realtors. Um, we were doing for a while a spotlight feature of members based on nominations from other agents. So the um, some of the agents that we brought on for the panel today are been nominated for tons of different reasons from um, ways that they've been, you know, working, working with them out in the field. They're a great person to work with. They've done wonderful things for the community. And, um, you know, that's why we're going to uh, be bringing them on. So we have a, um, you know, it's a smaller panel, but we want to be able to ask a lot of questions and go through and let everybody kind of give their, their, um, 
their feedback on some of your questions that you submitted, as well as a couple that we had. Um, our first guest is, I'm going to let him jump on. We're going to all, they're all going to share their camera. Um, first one is Ed Martin. Ed, if you want to share your camera and say hi to everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Ed. So do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, Remax agent here at uh, Remax First in Shelby Township for uh, 30 years now, this past August, and um, currently work on a team of six people and just still happy to be in the real estate business, yeah. having a lot of fun. Yeah. I've enjoyed doing some trainings with your team in the past. You guys have helped us a lot. Yeah. We, thank you. Yeah. I have to say everyone that talks about you, Ed, just has the nicest things to say. And, you know, sometimes that can be, you know, our, our industry that doesn't always happen. So it is really nice when people hear your name. They always have just very positive things to say. And I love that. Thank you. I think the co-ops are very important and uh, we need to work together. That's so awesome. So the next person we're going to bring on is Roseanne Powell. Want to share your camera, Roseanne? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Roseanne Powell. I have been a realtor with Keller Williams Lakeside in Shelby Township for 14 years. I started out at Lakeside in 2008, uh, and I've been there ever since, and full-time realtor, and love what I do. I started when I was 26. Well, and I got to tell you, she's always lending a helping hand around Lakeside. I, I happen to know that because I'm also with Lakeside, but uh, she's one of those people that is never too busy as much as she does. And having twins, you know, it makes you a little extra busy. Um, but as much as she does, she's always there to lend a hand to everybody who asks. I think that's amazing. So, yeah. Very cool. And I think that was actually one of the re reasons that you were nominated for the spotlight feature is that you always are willing to take the time for obviously like your team, but people outside of your team and helping out just within your brokerage and being a positive energy in your at Keller Williams Lakeside, which I felt she always looks amazing even when she doesn't sleep. <laughs> me blush I've been on two hours of sleep now come on girl. <laughs> I, I'm no I would not look that good I'd have big bags under my eyes and just be a total not friendly person so th that is awesome that you can do that <laughs> a lot of coffee a lot of coffee no I, I appreciate that very much uh yes I'm, I'm a very busy um mom of twin boys uh my business um has always been, uh, you know, the top priority until I had them. And then all of a sudden they become the top priority. And uh, we still, you know, you still do your work. And as parents, and I think I'm fairly sure just about everybody on this panel is a parent, um, if not everybody. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that it's really important to have balance and, and relationships are, you know, that's one of, one of the things, you know, that, that uh, I wanted to talk about about today is just relationships, not just with other agent or other, your clients, but other agents as well. And, and being able to help other people is, uh, to, to succeed in this business, it's, it's very rewarding. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll actually probably be, you know, a good question to ask you here is about that balance. Even though I hate to ask that, that question to women, um, but it is something, you know, worth sharing for everybody, fathers and mothers, like balancing the crazy real estate industry, as well as your personal life. And that is one thing that in the spotlight features that a lot of people have said is one of the hardest things about re being a realtor is that balance. Um, you know, being able to turn, turn it off once in a while. <laughs> you mean not taking calls at 1130 at night? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I'm going to bring Kevin Patton on. I'm going to share your camera, Kevin. Let me make sure I can, maybe I can help them too. Is it working? Um, I don't see you yet. All right. I think I accidentally, there we go. There right. we go. You blocked me. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Hi, how everybody. are you handling that work-life balance? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's been very interesting. Um, no, actually, you know, I've been doing this now. This is my 21st year with Coldwell Banker. Um, and... 
you know, I'm a, a crazy father of two wonderful boys. And, uh, you know, my wife and I have been together officially, to, well, not married, but together for 21 years. So we're, she's kind of my anchor, right? Holding, holding me together and telling me to slow down or keep going or when's that check coming in, you know? So, <laughs> um, but, you know, great. I, you know, I love, uh, I love, this is in the business for people and relationships and, and I didn't ask for a better career. I mean, for being a parent, as most people know, having this kind of schedule and being able to work around it uh, to be there for our kids' games and everything like that. There's nothing that you can ask for that would be better than this. So yeah, that flexibility and you make your own schedule. It's awesome. All right, Jessica Bellinger, we're going to bring her on now. Hello, Jessica. Oh, you're muted. I'm muted. Got it. <laughs> um, I'm Jessica. I'm with um, Remax uh, Eclipse out of Sterling Heights, and I've been there since 2015, um, but I've been licensed since 2012. I've gotten to work with almost everybody um, on the panel, which has been awesome. Um, and I just want to say, how could anybody have anything bad to say about Ed Martin? Come on now. I know. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> He's the nicest guy in the industry. He is. True. And everyone says that. And it's rare that agents will jump right in there and say, he is just fantastic to work with. I hope I get to work with him again. That is really cool to hear so much. So everybody Absolutely. on the team is so nice too. all the all team members I have enjoyed working with as well. All right. And we're going to bring on Natalia Sar. Hopefully I said that right. Hello, everyone. Yeah. (laughs) Hello, Natalia. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I started my career together with Jessica and Ed Martin at Remax Suburban back um, eight years ago. And uh, now I'm an independent broker at Sky High Real Estate Agency. Awesome. Congrats. That's nice to hear. Yes. Awesome. Natalia, where are you um, joining us from right now? Um, my office is here in Sterling Heights. Oh, okay. I thought you were in another country or were you? No, no. No? Oh, <laughs> I'm okay. Here in US. okay. <laughs> but I do love to travel. I can, I can admit that. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. I thought you, I thought you, um, were not out of town, out of the country for some reason. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah, we're glad you're here. <laughs> Sterling <laughs> Heights. <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us and sharing a little bit about yourself. Um, we're going to kind of just dive in. You know, we have about 45 minutes to go through um, the questions that have been submitted. Everybody get to know you and get some advice from you. Um, if you guys want to learn a little bit more uh, about the Spotlight Realtors on the panel today, they are their articles and inter- or interviews, I should say, are on our website under um, articles. And you'll see a whole spotlight realtor. So everybody who's won and been nominated for the spotlight feature is on there, as well as um, everybody that you're seeing here today. So you can read their interviews on our on our websites. Um, So can you guys all share your cameras and then we'll start going through the questions. I'm excited about this. (laughs) Me too. All right. Well, I'll ask the first question. Colleen and I will um, alternate. And we're going to be alternating responses as well. So um, who would respond first just to kind of give everybody an equal amount of time to to share, Um, starting with Roseanne. So Roseanne, what are some of the biggest challenges or takeaways that you've um, you've made during the pandemic or experienced during the pandemic? Great question to start out with. (laughs) So, you know, in this business, um, as I, I just mentioned, with, with when the pandemic officially hit our world, uh, my, my twins were 10 months old. Um, my family had to do some, some definite, you know, change of dynamic uh, at the time. My wife was a uh, nurse at uh, Beaumont Hospital, Beaumont, excuse me, at St. John Hospital, um, part-time and going to school uh, full-time for her NP license. 
and we had 10 month old baby boys and all of a sudden school stopped and everything just, you know, everything mm -hmm. came to a screeching halt. So what we decided was best was that she stopped working. And in order to do that, you know, I had to really step it up and make sure that I was, you know, able to continue to support the whole family. Um, the biggest change for us, because it was really truly only part-time, but the biggest change was insurance. So all of a sudden, you know, I had to find insurance. So I had to find, you know, proper insurance for the family and, and make sure that the money kept coming in and, and business was coming to a screeching halt as well. Everybody, all of our buyers stopped looking, all of our sellers stopped looking. So it really forced me to have to go back to basics of relationships. And I spent the first, I would say two months just taking two or three of my past client database, even people that I hadn't spoken to in a long time, because I'm really bad up until a couple of years ago, I've been really bad at picking up the phone and talking to people because I don't know, it's just that limiting belief that I've had, like, you, you know, I'll send them Christmas cards and I'll invite them to our client events and stuff. But picking up the phone was always hard for me. Um, so what I did was I spent a, a, some time committing to speaking to these people. I also sent uh, some, you know, handwritten notes, just checking in, not, not asking for business, nothing like that, just checking in with them. Mm -hmm. uh, how are things in your world? What's going on? You know, what's it like having the kids at home? What's it like working from home? You know, there, there were so many people going through so much um, and people were getting sick and people in their families were getting sick and, and people were scared. And honestly, if I could take anything away from the first six months to really a year, uh, the, the whole pandemic was relationships were everything and knowing now that a lot of those people that I reconnected with I know more about what's going on in their families now and I know that you know uh their son their you know last child going off to college next year I, I basically reconnected with them and that probably will, will turn into business they'll probably be more inclined to call me uh, but what I learned was not so much you know improving the business or increasing my bottom line right then and there. It was just about relationships. Yeah. That's wonderful. I feel like we kind of took that away too at the MLS, you know, mm -hmm. it was like we weren't able to get to the offices. We weren't able to do the classes. And um, it was like, how can we still keep this, you know, member relations going? And that's actually where kind of the mixing it up came into place with Colleen and I. So <laughs> Yeah, I think we did our first one three days after the shelter in place on how to do remote transactions and how to do remote showings. And yeah, it was like, how do we, how do we help people in this time where we can't stand in front of them in our classroom? And yeah, that's kind of how this was yeah. born. Check in, check in with everybody. How are you guys yeah. doing? <laughs> uh, Kevin, is there um, a takeaway that you've learned with, you know, managing your business during the pandemic or some challenges that you faced? I would probably have to say that the one thing I did get away from everything. So my pandemic was probably a little bit different than everybody else's because I was smack dab in the middle of a home remodel. Um, <clears throat> and we had no kitchen. We had no ceilings. We had no sink. Wow. We had no drywall. Um, we were literally down to studs and it was an absolute nightmare. So, and we were living in the home at the time. So, um, <clears throat> So what it did, uh, actually, because we could not bring contractors back into our home anymore, we were doing a lot of fun family creative projects, right? So it did give me the opportunity to spend a little bit more time um, doing projects and fun things with the kids. And, uh, and also, you know, that helped do a little bit of bonding because we do have a crazy schedule. I'm not usually home as much as I should be. Um, and I think that goes for everybody in this business, right? Um, but the good thing is I really got good at, like everybody mentioned, doing the virtual showings, the, the, the virtual communication, uh, and reaching out, like you said, making points of contact to people that we haven't spoken to a while. I would sit on my back porch cause I had no place else to sit and create zoom meetings with friends and just, uh, and clients and just touch base with them, see how they're doing. And it was a, it was a great opportunity to, build relationships rather than talk to them about business. I would call them up and say, Hey, you know, what's going on? How are things going? Because they were trapped. Some of them were trapped up North, uh, waiting to move down here. Some of them were trapped out of state. Um, you know, and, but the good thing is I did have some closings that were still happening during that time that we could not be present for, but, um, 
but I will definitely say the one thing that I can, I, I, I know that I took away from all of it was how important just having a structured life <laughs> and some sort of an atmosphere um, is kind of the core because that was, it, I noticed it was easier to function to get up once everything was established in the morning. I could, you know, it, it was hard because I had to get the kids set up on the computers and, you know, and usually it's like, basically get them dressed, get them out the door. And it was a little bit more of a, a balance for our life um, and, and just to keep things going. And then I could get on with my day and start going on and, and talking to, you know, I had a, a kind of an idea of who I was going to speak to every single day and made it a point to touch base. And weekly, like I said, just getting together with friends and people talking about sending letters and personal touches, that was very important because you know, three months was for us was a very long time. And I think everybody, a lot of people gave up and they stopped talking to anybody and they were just hiding out and doing what we were told to do. And, and that's not what our business is for. And people needed to hear from us. So um, it worked out really well for me because I was actually involving people on, on video calls while I was doing work on homes and painting and stuff like that. And people were like, what are you working on today? And it was like, Oh, check this out. You know, what do you think? And I was asking for people's opinions and it worked out really good because it kind of showed a little bit of a different side of me on, on that aspect. So, yeah. Well, I want to be able to have enough time um, going through all these questions. So I'm going to, Colleen, I'm going to have you jump to the next question um, and kind of go from uh, Jessica there. Um, all so right. Jessica to answer the next question. So Jessica, if there was one thing that you could change or go back and do differently when you first started out in real estate, what would that be? So if you could remember when you were new and were kind of giving advice to maybe people who are you know, getting started, what was one thing you would change or do differently you know, when you started in real estate that maybe you could give some advice on to agents? Unmute myself. Sorry. Every time I got to remember to do, do that. that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think just the authenticity piece of it, I think you start and it's a little bit overwhelming, especially um, like I went from a really small boutique brokerage over to, to Remax. And um, when you have people like Michelle Namovsky and Ed Martin kind of hovering, um, it's a little intimidating, right? It was a really, really small fish in a big pond. And so um, <clears throat> I think there was a piece of me that was like, well, in order to succeed, I have to be. And then I tried to put myself in that box. And for <clears throat> anybody who knows me on Facebook or outside of here, um, I'm obsessed with skulls. I'm a bit foul mouth um, and I'm covered in tattoos. And the reality is, I think there's a lane for everybody. Um, <clears throat> certainly, I don't go into appointments like a sailor. Um, however, <laughs> you know, I think that there's there's something to be said for people catch on to it really quickly if you're not actually being who you are every day. Um, and so when I started to get a little bit more comfortable in my own skin, I think my business really changed and took off and, um, and I'm not going to resonate with everybody. And I, and I can't, um, at, at least at this point in my career, I can't pick up every lead that comes in my inbox anyways, even if I could, you know, um, be the perfect for, fit for every single one of them. But I think that there's, um, I think that's just it. I think that that there's a lane for everybody and you'll find that the the more true you are to, to who you really are. Um, and I, I just, I didn't think there was a lane for me in real estate. So I tried to be or, or emulate other people and, you know. And it worked out better when you were being yourself. Well, the busier I got, the more I realized I didn't have time for the pretenses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it just started to kind of slough off naturally. Um, and, and yeah, I think that you know, like I said, there, there's people that I probably turn off with that. Um, but you know, um, and then the other thing, and I know two other panelists have touched on it, but, um, the, the relationships with co-ops is the other thing that's huge. I think I focus a lot on clients, which is important. Um, but the reality is, you know, when I go to present an offer to Kevin, who I've worked with in the past, or Ed, who I know and love, um, there's there's an ease of working together because you know each other and you, you have a comfort level there. So um, building not just your client relationships, but your relationships in general, I think is yeah, I definitely, we've definitely heard that from our trainers that your life is going to be so much easier when you get started in the industry, if you play nice, 
Mm-hmm. It's there, like you said, there's enough room for everybody and you, you know, everybody is going to, um, you know, you have your niche and run with that and just play nice and sandbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that answer. That's a great answer. All right. So same question. Let's uh, shoot it over to Natalia. Um, what would you change or maybe do a little differently? Maybe offer some advice to uh, agents who are just getting started. What would you do differently? Um, I would um, plan for success and stick uh, to my plan. Um, building uh, great habits that can sustain us when motivation is o- uh, ends is critical, especially in such a challenging industry as real estate. Um, a lot of times, young young agents or those who just started in real estate career um, overlook that, and um, that would really help them succeed in the long run beyond their second closing. I love that. (laughs) That's important. (laughs) Yeah, follow through. I think Uh, Ari is the next one to ask that too. And I got to say, I think you're like the most loved guy. Everybody's had the same thing to say about you, Ed. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And that's what I hear on the street all the time as well. I was just talking to Don Walter. She's like, I love that. Ed. Everybody who talks about you just lights up. So, Ed, if you could change or do one thing in the start of your career differently, what would it be? Um, I think asking more questions, I think, as Jessica mentioned, I was not comfortable at the beginning asking the questions that really needed to be asked. And it it took a little bit of time, but people want to tell you their story. And the more we know about their needs, where they go to work, where they go to church, where they drive, um, their budget, don't be afraid to ask about numbers. You know, what, what is your goal for your overall payment being realistic? And then once you can figure out the math, the rest of it just falls into place. But I think asking questions even today, find out what the people's needs really are, because sometimes they don't even know. They just have a vision and you have to see that vision through their eyes. And once you do, it's, it's cake. It's a lot. And it's a lot of fun and very rewarding, but I think the questions are the big thing. Old rule of selling, be a question master, right? Old Wickman technique. You know, I love Floyd Wickman. So I'm always, always on board with that. So, (laughs) all right, Taylor, you want to take it to the next question? Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure we're making the rounds. Okay. So, um, what is the, this one will be for who would be next Roseanne. So Roseanne, what is the best way you found to get leads without having to pay a monthly fee? Hey, um, I would say number one, handwritten notes took me a long time to come around to doing them, but I started by committing to doing two a day, um, and, and I started that uh, really with the start of the pandemic and, and I found that it has been very beneficial for my clients. Also, I, uh, very beneficial for our business, I should say. And I've encouraged my team to do that as well. And, you know, sometimes it's not, it's, it, there's always a holiday coming up or there's always a reason to reach out, but sometimes it's just a little note with a cute little cartoon character on the front that says hello. And, you know, just wanted to say hi and you're awesome and have a wonderful day. And honestly, that's just, it's helped out quite a bit. Also, uh, one of the things that we're, we're rebranding our team right now. One of the things that we did was, sorry about the background noise. No, you're uh, fine. One of the things that we did was uh, I went on Etsy and I found, you know, people are constantly wearing, you know, Remax or Keller Williams or whatever brokers they're with. They're wearing their hats, they're wearing their shirts. Uh, name tags, things like that. I, I feel like those are very generic and I'm not a very generic person. I want to be able to be a little bit more creative with it. So I went on Etsy and I started finding, I, I Googled or I searched uh, uh, real estate t-shirts and, and uh, things like that. And I found all kinds of small business owners that are doing really cute, great things. And I just recently bought shirts uh, for our whole team and they're just simple black shirts. And it says, Love family real estate it says love with a heart underneath it, family with a little oh. paw print, and then real estate with a little house underneath. And I just had it custom printed on the back of our website, and our team's wearing it. And we're getting tons of responses just on an everyday basis. And we're not, oh, that's 
Yeah, so so we're, um, you know, depending on the client, of course, but a lot of times we're not getting super dressed up for, for listing appointments because I don't believe in that. I believe in authenticity. I believe in showing up. Um, uh, you, you, you dress the, the part, um, and a lot of people don't want to see people, in my opinion, in suits anymore. It's just people want to be comfortable with you. So if I show up in, you know, uh, a dress, you're like a, you know, a shirt like this that maybe has my team logo or something on it, uh, I feel like that goes a long way. So I would say those, those things are, are kind of, you know, niche ideas on what you can do to kind of stand out. Um, and it's not a monthly thing, obviously it's a one-time investment. A lot of that kind of stuff is tax deductible, yes. uh, but I feel like it's a, a huge ROI for what you would be investing to have those, you know, we, I had the shirts made for 22 bucks a piece, which was awesome. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Good idea. I wasn't expecting that. But the handwritten notes, I've got some from, you know, like our, um, our auto insurance and homeowners insurance and like, just, you know, they, you know, there's probably notes, but remembering things about us and checking in and, you know, stuff like that. So I definitely can see how that would, how that would work. And you feel that connection where you can call about something and it's not like you're just a number. Um, so that's both of those, the t-shirt and that, that's a great, great answer. All right. Um, Kevin, do you want to share a little way that you've been getting leads um, without yeah. paying a monthly fee? Absolutely. So I do, I, I try to be, it's, it's kind of a name recognition thing. So I kind of focus on kind of more of the community where I live. Um, but it, it's more along the lines of just trying to get people to put the name with the face. And I do a lot of involvement with my son's school. Um, I'm always, uh, you know, and believe it or not, yes, it costs money to put like sponsorships and stuff like that together. But the good thing is, you know, like I, I just, I'm doing a closing today here and uh, at, at KW and they're, you know, first thing the agent said was, Hey, you let somebody take your grocery carts. <laughs> so, and I was like, well, you know, but that was something that I gained so much attention from because I live there and it was mostly the kids that saw my name and my face and say, Hey, that's Blake's dad. Right. So, um, you know, but yes, that costs money, but it's all about being involved in the area that you live in. And it's a lot of, uh, just community involvement, wearing your name out there, kind of showing who you are. And I also do, um, uh, like green cards, uh, same thing, uh, Christmas cards and, you know, kind of doing, uh, you know, mailing the whole neighborhood. It's, I think it's very important to let people and remind people of what you do for a living. And, you know, they see you out every day standing at the bus stop and it's like, oh, hey, thanks. You know, um, that's, that's what I would say. It's just really, just really community involvement. Make sure people know who you are, what you do, especially in your own neighborhood. And, you know, that it goes a long way for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very on-brand answer for you, Kevin. Aren't you Mr. Um, didn't yeah. you win like neighborhood award or something? <laughs> Good neighbor award. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. But yeah, no, that was uh, that was a lot of involvement. I'm involved yeah. in Special Olympics too, so that has a lot, lot to do. But it's, like I said, it, it goes a long way helping out people. So yeah. Yep. yep. I remember that from your interview too. So you guys want to check back on the interviews like I mentioned there was um some charities that were mentioned in the interviews and I do remember you talking about the the special olympics and um you know your involvement there which was really cool as well as everybody you know provided links so if that's something that you want to learn more about or um get involved in all that information is um on the interviews all right Colleen you want to go on to the next question all right, so we'll we'll send this out to Natalia. Um, what tool or skill um, do you possess that you think has brought you the most success? So if you could name one tool or skill that you think has brought you a tremendous amount of success, what would you name it? Oh, great question. Easy one, Colleen, thank you. <laughs> it's, um, it's really simple, it's uh, my phone. Uh, and getting over the fear of talking to people on the phone and not overthinking uh, before making that phone call, as brief as it may be, uh, is really the key here. So going 
back to basics. Um, unless we're having a conversation, nothing is going to, to change or happen. Um, so um, as simple as it is, it's a very profound thing to uh, master, not be afraid of, and actually feel like it's easy to do. <laughs> so um, for some, it may sound like, oh, it's a, a big accomplishment making 20 phone calls a day. Well, it's part of the job description. And if we're not comfortable of doing that, then we better find a better career <laughs> for ourselves. <laughs> very, very uh, people well love fun. hearing from us. Uh, it's not an intrusion in their personal life. It's um, And we have to turn, to, to turn around things in our own head. Uh, because when we uh, see that as that, that they want us to uh, check in, they, as Roseanne mentioned, they want us to reach out and just ask how their day, day is going. They want us to check in on their kids and uh, just ask about their situation or um, how, what improvements they have made to the house that we sold a year ago. Um, then life really becomes easy referrals um come your way and uh um it, once you have your phone i mean you're i think you are mostly set <laughs> you don't need a uh, super expensive uh um or elaborate tools um if you can master this one you will succeed in real estate and you will be uh have at leads coming your way at no cost every month that's a great answer. I think that's the number one fear of agents getting into the business is picking up the phone and having those conversations or calling for leads. So that's a great answer. All right. Ed, can we ask you the same question? What tool or skill do you possess um, that you think has brought you the most success? Um, I think just being prepared, being honest, being on time, I think is a big thing. Um, we've all started an appointment where you're five or eight minutes late, you're behind the eight ball, you're just never going to master that appointment. I like to be 10 minutes early. If you're with a buyer, get to know the house, point the things out to them as you're walking in the door. If the porch is falling apart, the chimney's falling down, don't be afraid to mention it to them and let them know these are the type of things we're going to be watching out on your behalf and we will find a better house, you know, right off the bat. Um, I think on a listing, you need to know more about the house than the client does. So you have to do your research. You have to know when they pulled their permits. Uh, have they been behind on their taxes for three years? I mean, there's a lot of indicators we can do before we walk in the door to make us prepared. So I think just knowing the, the inventory and being honest is, is the way to go. Yeah, that's a great, um, great answer. All right. And Roseanne, can we ask you that same question? I think it'd be Jessica, right? Um, oh, I had Natalia, Ed, yeah, and Roseanne. I, oh, okay. So, um, Roseanne, sure. uh, what would be the one skill or tool that you possess that you think has brought you the most success? Um, I, I agree with everything that the first two panelists said, but but I'm also, like that, that was going to be my answer. But while you were answering the question, I was thinking of something else that I just, I, I did for, for many, I've done for many years now. Um, and it's simple. Natalia brought up the phone and the phone is definitely a great tool. One of the things that has helped me over the years, and I've taught my team to do this, when you go to save a phone number of a client or a prospect in your phone, or even an agent in your phone, I have uh, put in my phone, agent Ed Martin, main street and then when that agent calls me or when that client calls me uh, you know client i i save them as client joe smith uh and i might say client joe smith main street because i sold their house on main street last you know four years ago when they call me i can be like hey joe i can answer the phone like i know them they were in my phone how are things you know you just you you put trigger things uh trigger words that will help you remember who Joe Smith was, it, it, you know, maybe uh, Joe Smith was obsessed with, you know, his dog. Hey, how's your dog doing? You know, so uh, first things first, it's easier for me to, if I'm in my car and I'm on a, you know, 20, 30 minute drive and I want to just do some, some quick follow-up um, warm touch, con you know, contacts with my clients, I'll literally just go to clients and I'll search 
I'll, I'll go, okay, I've got client, 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 and I've got hundreds of them now on my phone. Right. And I'll just go down the list and be like, this is the person I'm going to call today. And it, I don't know, it's just, it's helped. It's helped me keep uh, organized, not only when they call me, but also for me to reach out to them for clients and agents. Because if they're in my phone, I've probably worked with them before. And we have that rapport. And sometimes it takes a minute yeah. being in business for as long as we have. Sometimes it takes a minute to remember what was our last deal. Did we work together six months ago or was it six years ago? I don't remember. Um, but it's nice to, to have that rapport. So that's just- That's a great tip. That's a great tip. All right. So Taylor, you want to take the next question? Yep. So this will be for Jessica. So what is the best way to win a listing while competing against other realtors? Which I know is probably pretty uh, important right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's important. I think Ed touched on it going in and, and being knowledgeable. Um, it's not always, I mean, a lot of it is house centric, but there's other pieces of, of knowledge that you can kind of pick up on. Um, one of the things that when I first started out with, I was fascinated with was how the um, um, inspectors could decode every mechanical utility in a property. So I just learned how to do it. I pulled up the tools and I have them on my phone. So when I go in and a seller can't tell me when they put their AC or furnace in, I can look at the serial numbers and pull it up for them and, and not make them do that, that research, um, which tends to do well. But I think the biggest thing is before you can um, compete, you have to get comfortable losing because the reality is I think everybody on this panel, no matter how well we do, loses listings. Um, like period, you know, I went out to one where it was a warm referral actually this week from my best friend, her grandmother had passed away and her uncle was selling the property. He interviewed five agents that had been warm referred to him. I had a one in five chance and I didn't win it. And frankly, at the end of the day, he told me the reason I didn't win it was because I wouldn't go to 4% and I'm not going to. Um, and you know what, I was comfortable with that. If that was what it was going to take, um, I went out, I did my best and I was really comfortable on my own skin because because I knew there was a chance, right? Like if you're comfortable losing, then you go into the appointment with nothing to lose, period, because you didn't go in with that listing to begin with. So if you walk out without it, right? Um, and you just put your best foot forward because, you know, I don't know. You're I just I think that we're we're in this business that that screams more, more, more. And yes, we need to do more, 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 but um, but we also have to be comfortable with what we can authentically earn and um and honestly, there's been some listings that I've lost that I'm happy I lost when they, <laughs> you know, when the, when the, the expectations are unrealistic, but um, every time I go in, I put my best foot forward. And at the end of the day, if I, if I did that, um, you know, I feel comfortable. Um, and, and again, that authenticity piece at this point, at least I win more than I lose. And, and so, um, you know, I, I go in, I, I do the research and, you know. That was like one thing that I was always, my mom always said to me growing up was, you know, you already lost, you already failed if you didn't try. So, you know, you have to, you know, put your best foot forward, but you know, it's okay. It's okay. If, you know, it doesn't work out for you. Um, just, you know, at least, you know, you, you know, you tried. So that is a very, very good answer as well. You guys are giving some awesome answers today. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see who would be next here. We kind of jumped around a little bit. So I want to make sure that given everybody a fair chance, I think it would be Kevin now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Kevin, what is your uh, tip for the best way to win a listing while competing against other realtors? Uh, <clears throat> well, I have to agree. Jessica was spot on too. I mean, especially about the, the, you know, you can't let losing a listing get you down because people sense that on you. Um, you know, my, my personal opinion, I always make sure when I'm setting the appointment, I let them know that I'm going to call them you know, usually earlier in the day or the day before, make sure the time hasn't changed, make sure everything is still good, make sure they don't have any additional questions I can answer or research before I get there. Um, the other thing too is, you know, promptness, like Ed said, promptness, you have to be there on time. They expect to watch for you to be there even early. Um, I've had mentioned, I've had several people that have mentioned to me, um, <clears throat> the experience has been, 
that I'm always responsive. I'm always on time. You know, I always answer my phone when they call uh, and that goes a long ways. And then, um, you know, the last but not least, make this short, get a feel for the sellers, find out how do they feel about moving. Um, if there's a family involved, you know, how do the kids feel, you know, maybe offer some advice that could, that maybe you've experienced for, with prior clients uh, to, to help smooth up transition if they're leaving friends. Um, yeah. You know, all of these things, you know, I've had people that have been in tears at the listing table saying, I, I hate to leave my neighbors, right? And then you can just let them know, hey, I'm going to make sure that your neighbors know who's buying your house, right? You know, I mean, just kind of little things break the ice a little bit, but make sure that they're comfortable and they know, yeah, I know that somebody that is going to be moving into their home is going to love it just as much as they did, right? I mean, all of these things are very important, but Sometimes these people are moving and they don't want to move. It's a job transfer. It's a, you know, they're forced to move because they can't afford it or, you know, whatever else. You just never know their background, but make sure you ask the questions. And I think that'll go a long ways. So. Yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a really good point. Just kind of, you know, what they're going through when they do leave the house, people get um, attached to their home and you never know why, you know, if you don't ask why they're leaving, then you can't have that personal, personal touch with them. So it's awesome. Ed, do you want to, um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. This one's a little repetitive, so we're going to skip that one. Um, but Ed, how about we ask you, um, I think it would be Ed, right? I'm sorry, guys. I was since we yeah. jumped around. Okay. Add yeah. We're just, we eliminated a couple. So just, yeah. yeah what is be the added. best way? So what, it, what would you say um, short and sweet? Cause I do want to get a couple of these really fun ones um, asked before we wrap up, but what is one way that you would win a listing or suggest um, doing to win a listing when competing against other realtors? Cause this is really, um, you know, something that. Yeah. Well, I try not to go up against these guys first, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Good answer. Good answer. I see the I see the political response here. <laughs> We're not going to get them all, and I probably am guilty. I don't have the fanciest presentation and booklet and leaflets to use. I, again, just kind of repeating, going back to the honesty. But I think the the big things that maybe is setting the expectations for what they can expect of you and what we need to expect of them, that the house needs to be in a certain condition. I think they want honesty. Um, most people don't always go with the highest price. They, they want the truth. They want to be realistic. Um, speaking, I think, Kevin, we always try to, when we can, especially pre-pandemic, um, one or two and sometimes even three of my teammates come along with me on several uh, listing appointments we try to involve the kids, the pets, find out, you know, we kind of let the kids know, hey, is this Tommy's room? You know, we're going to have to make sure it's picked up. I'm sure you cleaned it up before we came over. But I think just setting the expectation on both sides so that they can know what to expect from you and, and you know, they know what we need from them to do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Um, Lori, well, I can't... Lori, uh Jag Loy just popped up. So thank you, everyone. Great tips and leading. Thank you for leading the way in our real estate industry. Is it sales? It's sales associates like yourself that keep the ethics in the industry at a high level, which is why I thought it was a no brainer to ask our spotlight agents because you guys are nominated. You guys were nominated and won for a reason. And I feel like ethics and, you know, just being positive, um, you know, good people in the industry is is what, you know, we need to, the members need to hear from, so. You definitely are the role mark, or the the hallmark and the role models for our industry, so the it's nice mark. hearing you, the role, yeah, the role mark, <laughs> too many hallmark movies, sorry, you know, the Christmas movies are coming. You already started no, but, with the <laughs> Christmas hallmark movies coming. <laughs> Hey, end of the month, end of the month, they come. Yeah. Um, but no, really, you guys, you guys are really the role models of, and especially agents getting into the business that they're looking at you and what you've done. And, and so that's exciting. You guys have sent the, the mark high and I love that. Um, do I get to ask the fun questions? Yeah. This is like yeah, my the last, favorite. The last two questions are, are fun. I, this is on. truly okay. my favorite because only in real estate, you cannot make this. I've been, you know, in and out of real estate for 22 years now and, 
Um, it, you just get the craziest stories. I mean, I literally had a seller in the night take the grass, like literally he was moving into a new construction home and he literally rolled up the grass and moved it in the night. So only in real estate can you have these kind of stories. So I, I just got to ask, um, we'll start with Jessica, if that's okay. Jessica, what is... <laughs> What is one crazy story that you can share with us um, it, that happened to you in your real estate career? Because there's there's some good ones out there. There's just, you know, you could write a book. <laughs> yeah. So um, people who follow me on social media know that I have an album specifically on Facebook. That's my adventures <laughs> in real estate. Um, and we see all kinds of things, but um, especially those of us who started like back in so I was licensed in 2012, but I worked um, for a real estate broker as an assistant um, in the in the foreclosure days, and we did a lot in Detroit. And we had a cross dressing squatter that had a lease on the back of a receipt written in crayon to prove that he was entitled to be there, <laughs> and it was it was beyond bizarre. Um, We've seen everything from um, somebody who took the cabinets out of a kitchen thinking that they weren't fixtures because they had never screwed them in to, um, I mean, just, just really, really bizarre things out there. So, but, uh, but yeah, those, the the foreclosure days were super wild. Has anybody had hardware hardware taken? I mean, cabinets is pretty extreme too, but that happened to my girlfriend at the, the, it was a foreclosure and they took every hardware Mm -hmm. piece in the house (laughs) <laughs> when she moved in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it happens. It's, it happens. Uh, wow, yeah. wow, west out there. I so. had a dispute over curtains and um, they refused to close unless the curtains would stay. <laughs> wow. It was, <laughs> we were Buying the house back for the curtain. Until yeah. the curtain question was resolved. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Roseanne, we gotta hear yours. <laughs> tell you, do you do you want another? Do you have another story to share, or do you want us to? to There's just too many, uh, <laughs> but um, um, since we're just out of pandemic, um, it happened right in the midst of pandemic. Um, back then, it wasn't my client, but I learned the his story uh, a little later on. He was purchasing a house during pandemic, and um, it was a done deal. Um, but the people still living in the house couldn't move because of pandemic. Oh, you're and he place, couldn't, you move. the people who were still lucky as the sellers couldn't move out and he couldn't move in. That caused all kinds of um, um, <laughs> conversations that were less unpleasant and yeah. uh, eventually that all fell apart. Well, I met him shortly. I met this um, person shortly after and we started shopping together. Well, guess what? We ended up looking at 10, 12 different other homes and he ended up purchasing the same home. (laughs) Exactly the same home. Wow. (laughs) Go figure. It oh, went better funny. the second time. Yeah, it went a little smoother <laughs> that time around, right? Everybody mm-hmm. was stressed, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All, All right, right Roseanne, Roseanne tell do you us- want to share one, one, and then we'll get to the last question, and we can wrap it up and give some prizes away. I know we're, we're going to probably run over a few minutes, um, so thank you guys, everybody who is on and sticks, sticks through, but we will be recording this. So if you do have to pop off, it will be on our YouTube channel too. So you can watch the remaining uh, part if you do fall, um, you do have to jump off. So Roseanne, what's a crazy story? So uh, <laughs> this is actually a really funny one. And I, I will try and be very, very quick. There's a lot more to it, but I'll give you all the Reader's Digest version. Uh, this did not happen directly to me. It happened to an agent on my team a few years ago. He, uh, it was one of the first times that he went out solo to show a client a house. Uh, He arrived at the house, which was about 10 years old. It was a newer construction home. Uh, He knocked on the door because it appeared that people were home. Somebody opened the door. Apparently there was a language barrier. Um, He said, hi, you know, I'm, I'm here to show the house. And the guy just basically pulled the door open and didn't say a word and just walked away. So uh, he was with uh, his client, who was a, a, an older uh, woman. And as they walked through, there was no furniture in the house whatsoever. Uh, it was a ranch style home. There were two children, 
maybe five to seven years old sitting in the living room. And as they walked towards the living room, they realized that the kids had markers in their hands and they were, they had drawn and it looked like months of drawing uh, on the walls from like three, you know, three feet and down. Um, there was all kinds of artwork on the walls that, okay, a little weird, but okay. Um, and then they also realized the open staircase to the basement was completely blocked off, meaning uh, somebody took a board to where you couldn't go down the basement. Somebody boarded it up and there was no access down to the basement. And they walked through the bedroom. It was really weird, no furniture, but there was this guy there and there's two small kids. They couldn't get down to the basement. And then they said, he said, I turned the corner into the kitchen. He said, and I couldn't believe what I saw. And I love this story because even though it's not my story, I love this story. Like waiting. waiting. I know. (laughs) There was a probably 75 to 80 year old woman sitting on the kitchen floor, on the tile kitchen floor with her iPad up watching a um, cooking show, like uh, an Asian cooking show uh, of some kind, chopping raw chicken (laughs) on the floor, on the floor and had a giant pile of raw chicken and she was chopping pieces of chicken off of the raw chicken and the client turned to my agent and said let's get the bleep out of here (laughs) out loud yeah I was gonna say this sounds like something out of a horror movie (laughs) (laughs) we won't eat at any Chinese restaurants near where this house was listed because we're sure maybe it was a Chinese family that maybe owned a Chinese restaurant nearby and that and we're pretty sure that maybe there was some uh, workers that were living down in the basement. That's the, that's the only thing that we could come up with, but yeah, that uh, to this day, and that was, a, that's about a nine-year-old story. And that, oh. that one takes the cake. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, yeah, that, 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 that would, a... that would freak me out. Too. <laughs> I'd be like, Peace. See you guys. <laughs> mm. Good ones guys. All right. Well, the last, the last couple are the last question that we want to ask. Um, if there is a, um, let me go real quick. So what is your favorite, my real source tool and why? And that will be directed to, maybe I should name somebody. That'll be good. (laughs) That'll be directed to, I think Ed is next. Well, thanks to you guys. Um, probably for me would be Cloud CMA, which your team has helped me. Actually, Lisa Harris came right to the office and, and helped me just with a quick phone call. And uh, that's been great for me. And then uh, Home Snap, I'm getting better and better at. But there's a lot of tools. But I think the education and the way you guys make yourself available for us is I went for years without doing any further education. I just did my thing. And about seven years ago or so, we added a couple of people to the team. And they had to go to the classes at MI Real Source. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go back too. And it was really, it was really beneficial. So thank you. That's cool. We love that, Lisa. She is amazing, isn't she? Kevin, you wanna talk about your favorite My Real Source tool? Uh, I'm with Ed. Cloud CMA is one of my uh, one of my top tools for uh, listing presentations, but Uh, Another one that I really love to put together is using market stats. Um, I love kind of fine tuning everything and kind of showing what the trends have been for the zip code or for the area or what's been going on for like the last three years or even the last 12 months, what's been going on. Or I use it a lot for like pandemic and everything like that. And for your analytical, I mean, buyer or your sellers, they love to see data, right? So um, so going through and showing the trends, I was able to go back and just do one from, uh, I think, uh, you know, just kind of showing the trends from what it went back to like 2011 or something like that. And, uh, when I went all time and I was able to show how much the market has changed since they purchased the home. Right. So, uh, what it also helps out cause you can narrow down price per square foot, you know, you can do days on market listings that are available, so on and so forth. And you can really fine tune it a lot, you know, based on school district or zip code or whatever, but that is by far one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great product. Um, We do have it 
um, like an actual course online. So everybody that's on, just so you guys know, you can take at your own pace, um, kind of like a college style course where you can go on um, and just, you know, go through different modules to learn each piece of the, of the, um, the products, great lead capture tool too. Um, do you incorpor incorporate that in your um, like listing presentations and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. I usually keep it as a separate page, but I will, I will show it, um, you know, just once I go through the market analysis itself, the CMA, and then yeah. I will kind of show just because you can kind of see days on market price per square foot. And then I can actually show them on a little bit broader of a scale and say, Hey, this is outside of your neighborhood, but this is your whole zip code or the school district or, you know, whatever. And then I can kind of fine tune it based on that. But, yeah. you know, I take it a step by step and, you know, depending on who I'm working for, but it's pretty easy for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Natalia, what is your favorite My Real Source tool and why? I to single out uh, just one, but Transaction Desk that uh, keeps us uh, all organized and authenticizing. We use it all the time. We're so used to that. We don't even mention it because it's so much part of our reality today. Yeah. Um, it's a necessity. It has become a necessity um, during pandemic. We continue using it and uh, it comes in very handy when you know it and you can do it with your eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Certainly awesome. an advice for young realtors or those who are just starting in real estate career, go take a class, learn how to do it, practice, practice until you are excellent at that. Yeah, absolutely. And you can we do have a lot of them post. Um, posted to live webinar ones um, mm -hmm. on the books too. So awesome. Great answer. Um, and then Roseanne, do you want to share one of your favorite tools? Yeah, I, I love HomeSnap Pro Plus. I am a big fan of that program. Uh, I joined that. I decided to become a paying member of that a couple of years ago. Um, and since then, I've been able to collect reviews on Google um, that'll follow me no, no matter where I go or no matter what I do, it's, you know, they don't go away. So I love that. And I have uh, the return on investment. I mean, I've received calls just maybe, just um, two months ago, you know, I got a call from somebody that was down in uh, Tennessee that said, Hey, my grandma's going to be looking for a place, you know, to buy up there. And I went online and I found your name and you've got good reviews. And that's thanks to the, the HomeSnap Pro Plus that I'm able to ask clients for Google reviews. And I feel like that has happened a couple of times because uh, it's turned into instant ROI where I feel very good about that. So I like that. I like that program a lot. Awesome. Yeah. And just so everybody knows too, what's really nice about the pro um, that is a, you know, exclusive to my real source is that you can, you know, edit your listings and you know do all that like as an agent a pro the pro you know pro features that we've added to that as well and then you're talking about a lot of the lead capture elements of home snap um which i i see i see agents utilizing and it just seems so i mean i'm not an agent but it just seems like going into the app it seems like it's just really easy to use um you know the, the lead capture pieces to it and then um, Jessica, we're gonna wrap it up. Do you have a favorite My Real Source tool? So I, I, I've used HomeSnap, I've used Transaction Desk, obviously I've used Cloud CMA and I, I won't reiterate, I love all of those programs, but I think the people at My Real Source is, is huge. Um, and, and I know that's not technically a tool. I'm not calling you guys tools, but like, <laughs> but like, I just think that the staff <laughs> over there is phenomenal. And every time that I've needed assistance with my real source account, or um, I specifically had an issue um, recent, well, not recently, but in the, the semi recent past with somebody giving out a lockbox code that shouldn't have been given out. And we actually had to take it all the way up to um, sitting at a round table and just the, the way that things are handled, um, or responded to when, when I have to call over there, um, is huge. And I think that, that, um, that may not be technology. Like I said, I utilize all the tech pieces, but, um, but it's, it's really big to be able to, to put hands on somebody when you need to talk to somebody. Um, I had a issue this year with a, a listing that my front desk had helped input and they input the square footage wrong. It was a Royal Oak build that was built on a 700 square foot foundation, but it was close to 3000 square feet and they had not changed that. Um, and at 11 o'clock at night, I, I, you know, Facebook messaged Tracy, <laughs> um, 
and and got a response and, and it was past her hours of, of needing to respond to me but just um it, it just it helps when you have a, a decent staff and, and and people that you can really kind of um, put hands on and, and know that they're actually supporting you from a business perspective. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be, and we'll Tracy be is great at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that answer. <laughs> Just so everybody knows we're not robots, but we, we can be tools, right? <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I really enjoyed this. It was nice, you know, being able to see your faces again. It's been a while. Um, hopefully and so for being on the and for being okay. on the panel, I'm sending you guys out all a metal cantina water bottle and a little gift. So be on the lookout. I'll get those probably out in the mail this weekend. So just yep. want to thank you. Your your tips were great. Your answers were great. And all the feedback has been wonderful. Everybody's saying, oh my God, that's a great idea. You know, I love that. So yeah. thank you guys all for taking As well as everybody that. that's on today too, since we weren't able to get to some trivia, um, everybody who's on today will be reaching out and you can choose from one of our marketing materials um, that we can send out to you. So so um, well, with the water bottle, it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I did take one, by the way. Yeah, the water know. bottle. Yeah, the water <laughs> bottle is probably, you know, the. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you guys so thank much. You. Thanks, everybody. And I loved all your answers and appreciate you guys taking the time. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend and fall. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm Take sure care. Jessica, I bet you're a Halloween fan, Jessica, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. oh, All right. Job, well, have everybody. a good Thank one, guys. You. Thank you, everybody who who is joining, and I will be reaching out to you guys. Cool. All Thanks, right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much for putting it together. Yes, Bye. you're welcome. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.